He says, now, if you linger, you will learn. I was actually the other day uh, in a meeting. Uh, if I preached uh, holiday sermons, and I do not. Uh, occasionally, you know, across the years, I may. But in particular, uh, I stick with the text. And the reason being is people will hang their hats on those particular days and anticipate those sort of uh, cliched moments. And they walk away with the cliches as opposed to a better understanding of Jesus Christ. And so you move from a Christmas to uh, a New Year's sermon to a Mother's Day sermon, a Valentine's sermon, a, a Christmas break sermon. I just, oh my goodness, on and on and on and on. Uh, I want to stick with the word of God and uh, whatever comes next, that's what we're going to preach. And I want you to be involved in that process as we grow along. I want you to be involved in that process. And so we come then to John chapter 15. I am uh, continually blessed by this information as I'm understanding Jesus Christ. I want to read it in your hearing uh, today um, in its entirety, not chapter 15, but verses 1 through 11, because I want you to see this concept of abiding. And if you're here and you are uh, feeble in the knees or in the legs and you need to sit down, I understand that. Um, but um, John chapter 15 Verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And here we are. Uh, remember these words, and if you're able to uh, mark those in your text, you'd want to do that. The text says, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you, that your joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God, open our hearts and our minds in this moment. Help us to hear your word. It is only by your help, your power, that we're able to preach and that we're able to hear and understand. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just a little bit more on the volume there, Paula. Thank you. Particularly so that I can hear, uh, not so much for them, I do mean in these monitors here. <laughs> you all right there, Willie Jane? I'm doing well, brother. It's early. Saturday morning, and though the boy had accompanied his father to the creek to fish.
fish with worms. Today they were going trout fishing, and he's excited. The father has all the accoutrements already packed in the truck, but he needed to stop off by the local store and get some minnows. And the boy was absolutely just enamored with the minnows swimming in the little styrofoam cooler. As they traveled along, the boy thought how cool it would be to, to actually hold one of the minnows and keep it with him. And he asked his father, said, said, Dad, can I, can I get one of the minnows out of the cooler? Dad said, no, I better leave them in the cooler. They need to stay in the water. The boy thought on it some more. He thought how cool it would be to hold that minnow in his hand. And so he said to his dad, Dad, can I get one of the minnows out of the cooler? The dad took a glance from the road and looked over at his son to make sure that it wasn't being obstinate. Looked back at the road and understood his boy was just being curious. He said, no, I need the minnow to stay in the water. The boy thought that maybe the water is the clue here. So, so Dad, I got my water bottle. Do you think that I can take the minnow out of the cooler and put it in my water bottle? No, son, you'll need that to drink out of later. I need the minnow to stay in the water cooler. Then he remembered that his mom had cooked him some soup so that he'd have for lunch while sitting there on the banks. And so he said, well, Dad, I, I have soup, and I'm, I'm not really that hungry. The minnow could come out of the styrofoam cooler and go into the water uh, for the soup that Mom made for me. And Dad said, no, I need the minnow to stay in the cooler until I'm ready to use it. I need the minnow to stay in the cooler. The, the father knew that he was going to use the minnow to fish later, but if you would just use this as a mnemonic device, if you will. He said, I need the minnow to stay in the water. Do you mind if I say, I need the minnow to minnow in the water? Smell good. I need the minnow to minnow in the water. Doc, I already know that you are on top of this, and so you understand that the word abide is minnow. Just as a mnemonic device, minnow means to stay, remain, continue. This is what Jesus is saying to all of these minnows. I need you to minnow. I need you to stay in the water. You, you, you can't live outside of the water. And you want to stay and remain until such a time when God is ready to use you. You are no good to God if you are in the little boy's hands. You are no good to God if you are out of the water, if you are not abiding in him. He needs for us the minnows to remain in his hands. The, the, the leading idea here is a Steadfast continuance to stay, 
to remain, to continue. The word here um, speaks to us of an action that occurred in the past but has continuing effects, he says, Jesus does to us. Abide in me. You, you're here, but I need for you to remain here. And one of the things I'd like to say here early on is that Jesus says that we should abide in him and that abiding requires us to walk in him. First uh, John 2, 6 says, whoever says he abides in him, which is Jesus, ought to walk like him. Walk is a matter of life. And I mean to say to you, brothers and sisters, if you're saying that you abide in Jesus Christ, there ought to be some signs. You ought to demonstrate in your everyday life that you are abiding. Those who abide in Jesus, John goes on to say in 1 John 4, 6, he says that we abide in love. He says in 1 John 2, 10, that we abide in the light. Now you understand that God is love and God is light. And then he says, 1 John 3, 14, that those who do not abide in the light abide in death. There is no in-between ground. You're either in the light or in the darkness. Now, I, I, it's important that we understand definitions here because the world loves to take our words. And uh, I'm seeing now what I consider to be a friend and a neighbor uh, some years ago uh, has gone on to that eternal rest, as it were. Uh, but we are concerned whether or not it is a rest or not. Because we don't know if my neighbor abode, if he abided on the vine. There are many who make the profession, but my brothers and sisters, just because you say that you're saved, doesn't mean a whole lot. What means a lot is your transformed life. And so we tend to say stuff like, you've got your wings, even though God is not making any more angels. We tend to say, your watch is over, take your rest when there is no rest for the wicked. <laughs> I'll try to say it again. I, I mean to say that if you haven't been saved and you die and go to hell, there is no rest. I can speak it as many times as I want to on this side, but when you're on that side, there is no rest. And this becomes one of the huge stumbling blocks for people to come to Christ because one of their family members dies and they know that they did not live the life and that Christ did not shine in them. And so they find it difficult to leave their family and their friend knowing that this person did not live for Jesus, which behooves every one of you. To make sure that your family members know who Jesus is. And that once they have been introduced to him, that they abide in him. And so we need to understand something of the definition of the word abide. It is important to me that you understand that, what it means to abide. Obviously, a short definition comes to us as to stay to remain or to continue. But just by way of um, articulating a proper explanation of the word, let me tell you that abide means to stand fast. It means to stay where one is. It means to loiter. It means having no proper 
motion. Five, six, and seven has to do with condition. It says to remain contented with, uh, to observe a conviction. I abide by my decision. Then that impersonal way uh, to remain for something to be done. There is yet something to be done. But I want to hang my hat, as it were, on the first four, and I promise this will be a short message, and it will. But to abide means to stand fast. Um, it pictures for us a soldier um, who is standing on the lines, and when you hold the lines, you stand fast. We are, Jesus says, to abide in him regardless of the clouds or the cutting. We are branches on the vine and sometimes there will be storms in your life. But Christ says you have to abide. There'll be disappointments and there'll be struggles, there'll be issues in your life, but that's no reason to turn your back on Jesus Christ. Whoever told you that being a part of Christ's family means that you are uh, going to be reclined on a bed of roses, they lied to you. Being a Christian is difficult, but you must remain in the vine. Because therein lies your power. And then, not only because of the clouds, which are external, we have that sort of personal cutting of the Lord who comes in and prunes the vine, and prunes the branches, rather. And I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that in that time when Christ, God, comes to you and began to prune you, you still have to stand fast. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 19, if he had been of us, he would have remained minnow, would have stayed with us. And you're asking why that soldier broke ranks? It is because they were never truly a soldier. Uh, there are people who pick up weapons and the accoutrements of Christianity and suggest to you that they have been born again, but they've never known Jesus Christ. So that when the time of difficulty comes, they do not remain. Jesus says, remain in me. He says, do not break ranks. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that we are in a warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But then the Bible says we ought to stand therefore. Even though things are difficult, we are still supposed to keep ranks. Uh, we might say uh, in modern day warfare, watch your land. Everybody, every soldier on the front line uh, would have a span where he would watch she will watch and you're looking in this sort of direction here and you got to keep your eye on your lane. Uh, you can't look down uh, the ranks and see somebody else getting in trouble and start firing down there. And that's what happens with many Christians. Uh, you don't watch your own lane. You're looking at other folk and firing in the wrong direction. And I'm going to tell you what happens now when you take your eye off your lane. Not only do, because all the lanes overlap, and so I got my brother on the side here and on this side. When you don't watch your lane, you leave this person open. You leave this person open. It's unlikely that you're going to hit what you're aiming at down there, and now you're open. Are yeah. you hear what I'm saying? That's why many of us get so beat up in this Christian journey. It's because we don't abide. We don't watch your own lane. Stop paying attention to somebody else. Stop breaking ranks. Keep your eyes on that. Listen now. You know, hey, you got the internet and um, 
You can go on and look at other churches, pastor other churches, but you really can't. Uh, just because you're sitting in your house and you're watching television, uh, can I say it grammatically this way? You ain't been to church. It is the gathering, the assembling of God's people. Uh, and then, brothers and sisters, I can't pastor some other church. I've got to watch my lane. I don't know. I, I drove by and Hopewell over here started back church. I'm happy for them, but I can't pastor that church. I can't pastor New Hopewell down the road. I cannot pastor any other church. I got to watch my lane. What I'm trying to say to you, Tiffany, is this. Listen now, you need to watch your land. Don't you worry about the folk down the pew. Don't worry about folk in another church. You keep your eyes on yourself. And that way, you abide in the